everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I've noticed a lot of questions coming up on the forums uh, in response to the Dominance War where users are trying to create their characters um, and once they're done modeling and setting up their UVW maps the question becomes how can I extract an ambient occlusion map from my object and use that as a layer in my texturing process. Well, let me show you how to do that today using Mental Ray. On a side note, another thing I'm trying out this week is I'm going to be using a smaller frame that's going to pan around like that as I move the mouse around. So it's kind of neat. And I'm using that because when I show you intricate techniques like setting up um, this render, I need to be able to show you the user interface with enough detail that you can actually read what I'm doing. So this may work out for the better, it may not. Let's, let's see how it works. So I have my teapot here and I've skewered it with a box because I want to show you how the ambient occlusion render will take into consideration the objects around your character. I've also gone ahead and created some UVW maps, uh, UVW layout for this teapot in the same way that you would a character. So we're not going to be relying on the automatic UVW layout as part of the um, render to texture tool. So let's get started. I'm going to head up here to my toolbar, rendering. And I'm going to go down to render to texture. And because I've had my teapot selected, 3D Studio Max knows that I want to that I want to do it to this teapot here. I'm just going to walk you through some of the most common settings here. The first of which is general settings. The most important one is here, this output group. The path determines where the image is going to be rendered to, because it's going to save it no matter what. And it's just saving it to the, to the default here, scene assets, images, nothing special. So I'm going to scroll down here we see that our teapot is on the objects to bake list. Next up is how the mapping is going to be set up, whether this tool should automatically generate those UVW layouts or whether it should use the ones that we've already made. And we want it to keep the ones we've made. So I'm going to click right here, object, use existing channel, channel one. And I'm going to show you here, you can see on my unwrap UVW modifier that all this is happening to channel one. That's why I've set it to channel one here. Okay, moving on. Here we go. We can see output. This is where we're indicating to the render to texture tool exactly what we want from it. We want an ambient occlusion layer. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and show you how I made it. I clicked on add, and then this modal dialog here pops up, and I tell it ambient occlusion mental ray, add elements. And now it's going to create for us an ambient occlusion pass. So I'm going to keep scrolling down here. Now where do we want it when we're done? We want it in the diffuse color slot so we can actually see what it looks like in the viewport. Now if you don't see this, the reason is because down here, I'm just going to show you this really quick and then we'll jump back up. This rollout, Baked Material, asks us what should happen to the maps that have been baked as part of this process. We want them to be saved as a shell. And instead of duplicating it, we want it create new baked. So it'll create a whole new material for the viewport only that will show us this baked material. And I just picked standard blin, nothing special. And that's what lets us say, OK, I want the ambient occlusion map to be to be the diffuse color of this material. How big do I want it? Well, um, I think uh, 512 is a nice size for this demonstration. Um, and then, of course, if you're already familiar with ambient occlusion, you're, you know what these mean. The samples, the amount of quality. So if we turn this up, we'd get a higher quality result. It would take more time, though. Spread, maximum distance, don't have to worry about those. Uh, I'll cover them in another tutorial. Um, but yeah, I'll cover them later. So good, it looks like we've got this all the way uh, set up. So now all we have to do is click render. Of 
cool, it looks like it's done. So we've rendered out our teapot here, which you can see, and I'm just kind of scrolling around to show you. I'm going to close this out, and I'm going to close our render to texture dialog. And now in the viewport, you can see that our teapot has a texture applied to it that looks an awful lot like ambient occlusion. And if I move the skewer, you can even see where the skewer is casting a shadow into the object. Isn't that awesome? Now this is only in the viewport. You're not going to see this when you render the object. Let me show you. In the material, if I use my eyedropper tool and I pick my teapot, or you could pick your character, you'll see that in the renderer it's using the old original material, which was that standard gray. But in the viewport, it's showing me the baked material. Very cool. So if I go into Photoshop, and I go to File, Open, I can now open the ambient occlusion map that we just rendered. And here it is, ready for you to layer on to your character as part of their texture map, uh, as part of their, you know, self-illumination, really wherever you want to put this. And that's the technique. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday Movie. You can find all of my Monday Movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.